Okay, I want to talk about turbo upgrades on the 997.1 platform, .2, 991, pretty much all the platforms. And we got this car apart. Right now we're going to remove these turbos and we're going to get them upgraded through Tile Sport. We're going to clip the turbines in the back. We're going to increase the compressor wheel. The exducer is going to get increased by a significant amount. They're going from a 55 millimeter to a 65 and the, the inducer is going to be going from a 43 to a 48 millimeter. Uh, the advantage of upgrading your stock turbos and actually rebuilding the internals, machining everything out. Uh, companies like Tile Sport, which is one of the best known in the industry uh, companies that's a Borg Warner distributor. This is actually a Borg Warner turbo. As we have the turbo actuator here and what this turbo does is actually it's a variable geometry turbo VGT or VTG. There's the, that's basically the same thing VTG, VGT, whatever you want to call it you can call it but pretty much what happens is it varies the veins and allows for instant boost at low rpms so essentially getting rid of turbo lag and that that makes it a very nice turbo setup if you kind of want to bump up your horsepower to about 200 250 horsepower if you're going to run e85 and then keep your stock setup as far as the vtg function that way you avoid all that turbo lag that turbos are known for so we're going to remove this engine completely but right now i'm just removing the turbos because I, I need to go ahead and get these things uh completely rebuilt and i'll make another video showing you guys after the rebuild what it looks like um, but right now we're just getting it all removed it's a pretty lengthy process it calls for a lot of work got to remove everything around it uh, much easier to remove these uh, with the engine out but I don't want to waste any time because I want to get this turbo shipped out and the other one that way we can get all our upgraded internals get them properly balanced so there's no downtime because downtime equals uh, my lifts being taken up for a long period of time and that's not good because we could get other vehicles in uh, but what's going to happen is we're going to clip the turbines I'll show you when we get the new ones what that means is basically these fins get clipped out and that gives it a little bit better efficiency and they actually uh, will spin much slightly faster and allow for more pounds of uh, pretty much uh, flow. So there's like a flow chart. The GT2 turbos are a little bit more efficient than your turbo 911 turbo cars and that's because they have slightly bigger compressor by one millimeter and clip turbines and a couple other interesting features on the inside I have a whole spec sheet of what exactly the outcome is but they are about 20 percent more efficient than stock turbos they also cost a lot more too I believe a GT2 brand new VGT turbos cost somewhere in the neighborhood of nine thousand dollars a piece um, if I'm not mistaken they're very expensive brand new now I'm sure you can get somebody to sell you some that have been remanufactured alright so this is actually gonna get removed as well um, this is our a, a boost diverter valve this hooks up to the vacuum line we'll remove this and ship without it and um, I'm gonna get one of these removed soon let me see if I can show you the uh, exducer here there we go but it's hard to see but it's a pretty small little wheel it's about 43 millimeters compared to it being a 48 when it's done we also do a 49 millimeter as well uh, because the 49 is going to be a lot more efficient as far as running the 49 versus a 48 but the 48 is pretty much what's being offered right now through tile uh, we, we do have access to the 49 millimeters with a different style compressor wheel. It's actually one and a half millimeters less. So they, oh, everybody wants to go with the 65 and that's why 65, 68s um, I don't recommend on this car because from our experience we had a couple customers that wanted the 68s and we 
did what they asked, uh, but they are known for a little bit more leg. If you're not used to leg on this car and you're used to the stock setup, you're going to be pretty disappointed. 68s dramatically increase leg. Also, the factory housings um, will not flow past really right under 65 millimeters, so it's pointless to even go to a 68 because that just bugs things up and, and allows for uh, problems in the future as far as experience and leg. And just to say that you have a 68 millimeter, I don't think that's worth it. Um, of course, when you do the upgrades on the turbos, you want to upgrade your exhaust. This is a three inch um, for about 600 to 700 horsepower, E85. That's pretty typical. This is what you want to run. Four inch is anything over that going to a thousand plus and uh, that will get you what you need to do another item you have to upgrade is there's actually a lot of items but the intercoolers are going to get upgraded as well the plenum system is also going to get an upgrade and uh, we'll make a video showing all the components after we install the upgraded parts that way you guys have an idea of what it costs and what it entails to get to a 600 to 50 to 720 wheel horsepower in order to make that kind of power and also the injectors have to be upgraded so there's a lot of components that you want to upgrade uh, one of the biggest items you want to do is you want to replace all your coils these are these coils right here are actually brand new spark plugs cooling fittings need to be pinned on this one we have no cooling fittings pinning no one's ever done them and the good news is they never slip that's your cooling fittings right here there's a lot of them there's seven cooling fittings that need to be pinned or welded whichever method you prefer both are accepted methods if done correctly you know you can glue them install them back in and pin them it becomes basically one unit they'll never slip again that's a method that uh, a lot of companies use and it's a good method they've never had a leak before with that method of course welding requires a good welding and also welding billet to billet fitting to a porous metal can be a problem if you don't know how to weld so you know you want to have a, a very good welder that can do that so you don't have leaks later so yeah this is going to get removed everything here the turbo lines is another item that we replace there's uh, rubber fittings attached to them it's hard to see right now because the engine is still in the air but those turbo lines and rubber fittings uh, they'll break actually and bust and cause a catastrophic coolant leak we've had several guys that uh, ran their cars pretty hard let me see if I can show you guys those turbo lines you can see that one in the back right there with the rubber fittings way out in the back behind the uh, throttle body that's the one that normally blows and you'll just have a bunch of coolant also the coolant hoses will get upgraded because these will blow up and we stress this a lot but the radiators should get upgraded we upgrade the radiators to a higher flow between 30 and 40 percent more flow of coolant that way they're not able to keep up with all that heat that's going to be generated with more horsepower but this is pretty typical for this engine i hope this video helps somebody and uh comment below i'll try to answer some of the questions and we'll see you next time